Hey, it's Mike here, and today, what experts have deemed as a longevity vitamin, which I'm just gonna go ahead right now and crown, vitamin L. Vitamin longevity. More specifically, we are talking about ergothionine, which, like vitamin C, is an antioxidant. I think it should be another vitamin antioxidant, but it has a ton of unique and powerful antioxidant properties above and beyond what vitamin C can do. It has specific anti-aging properties that we will cover. It is also just a really potent antioxidant that beats out a bunch of other antioxidants. It can make it into places that other antioxidants like turmeric curcumin can't. It also has this incredible lifespan within the body and so much more. So we're gonna learn the basics, look at all the studies, and learn about where you can get ergothionine or vitamin L from. As this paper mentions, ergothionine is a naturally occurring hydrophilic amino acid that is only synthesized by select bacteria and fungi. It's a sulfur-containing amino acid, which is sort of unique for an antioxidant. We'll get to those food levels in a bit, but first, just why this is so important. Lower levels of ergothionine are associated with lower cognitive impairment, a ton of diseases, brain diseases, diseases, and going to Dr. Gregor of nutritionfacts.org, who definitely inspired this deeper dive into ergothionine. Here's what he has to say. Of more than 100 compounds measured in the bloodstream of thousands of individuals, the one most associated with the lowest rates of disease and death was ergothionine. Yes, this publicly funded Swedish study did find that higher levels of ergothionine were, for example, associated with about a 20% decreased risk of cardiovascular disease mortality. And yet you get ergothionine and your lifespan goes up. If you are a nematode, AKA a mini worm, microscopic worm, or also from this study, if you're a fly, you know, your lifespan's gonna go up as well. And a step even further back looking to Petri dishes, uh, yeah, if you you administer ergothionine, it is protective for those caps on the end of our DNA known as telomeres, which of course are huge in terms of aging. And that was funded by a company that makes some ergothionine supplements, but we're gonna get to a bunch of more studies. I just wanna talk about food here and what foods have it. Well, there are various foods like black beans that do show up on the charts. I think there's only really two types of food that really make it worth it to eat. And that is mushrooms, particular mushrooms, as well as tempeh. And that has to do with just how fungi and again, bacteria produce it. And these levels can wildly vary depending on you know how mushrooms are cultivated. For example, from this study, just looking at oyster mushrooms, they can have between 12,000 milligrams per kilogram and 100 milligrams per kilogram. And looking around, lion's mane and maitake mushrooms are also pretty high, but one study found that porcini mushrooms were the highest. And if you have any interest in growing mushrooms, as this study found, adding the amino acid methionine, probably because it's also sulfur containing, can dramatically increase that ergothionine content of various mushrooms. And yeah, as you can see from this chart, tempeh is also a really strong contender. So if you're not into mushrooms, tempeh is a good option. Now really quickly, does this really deserve vitamin status? Should this really become vitamin L? You might be thinking, don't we require vitamins in order to live? You know, we might need them in our diet or at least need some sunlight to make vitamin D, for example. Well, this Nature News article, which does refer to as a vitamin in the title, but a vitamin-like antioxidant in the subtitle, mentions that longevity expert and UC Berkeley professor Bruce Ames considers it a longevity vitamin and that it is essential for long-term health. Uh, Dr. Greger also argues for its vitamin status here. Because we can only get it in food, and there's toxicity associated with its depletion, Johns Hopkins University researchers conclude that ergothionine may represent a new vitamin. Traditional vitamins are characterized by the manifestation of an overt dietary deficiency disease within a short time frame, and no specific deficiency disease has yet been identified but perhaps deficiency diseases are staring us in the face. And some peer-reviewed research has actually gone further than that, like this study saying, quote, ergothionine is now considered an essential nutrient. In terms of E for ergothionine, vitamin E obviously already taken, and then we do have a vitamin K, 
And the next letter in the alphabet is L. So vitamin L for longevity. All right, more studies. We want more studies on this. Okay, we have a pretty good safety profile, even synthetic ergothionine from the European Food Safety Authority, they say, is safe for its intended uses. And we really have a lack of human trials here. I wanna see more come out, but we at least have this one that gave people ergothionine, saw those blood levels go up, it did work. And then they also saw a decreasing trend in oxidative damage biomarkers. But since this was a short, small study in young and healthy people who aren't gonna have that much oxidative stress generally anyway, you know, the results weren't huge. So I'd love to see a bigger study on people with you know metabolic issues. For example, this one, which is about to happen. But we do have another human study, this one that gave an ergothionine containing supplement to people with joint issues and found that it decreased joint pain severity and increased range of motion, which is cool. But people haven't been studying ergothionine for that long. However, they have been just feeding people mushrooms and seeing what happens. We can look to shiitake mushroom studies for some answers. However, who knows if it's just the ergothionine. This trial gave people shiitake mushrooms or a placebo for 10 days and then had them do some prolonged exercise exercise, and the results were that there was a demonstrated antioxidant activity increase. How about immunity from this study? Four weeks of eating shiitake increased two types of T cell immune activity, including natural killer cells like doubling and improving their function, as well as reducing C-reactive protein, that inflammation marker, which is great. And really quick, in terms of oyster mushrooms, again, high in ergothionine, this study found that it decreased the visceral fat and the cholesterol levels in women, as well as the glucose and triglyceride levels of men and women. And remember, Ozempic acts by increasing GLP, which is a hormone that regulates appetite. I have a whole Ozempic video if you wanna watch it, but from this randomized control trial, increased GLP as well as lowering hunger scores. So, you know, a modest Ozempic effect there. And now for a super quick break with today's sponsor, Seeds DS01, a daily symbiotic, being a probiotic and a prebiotic combined. This little guy, each one of these pills has like 53.6 billion active bacterial cell units from 24 different strains, which are scientifically shown to support various areas of health, including skin health, heart health, gut barrier function, as well as digestive health. And today we are gonna be covering bloating. Well, it tends to go away for most people as they eat a more plant-based diet. Sadly, a lot of people who have quit a vegan diet have cited bloating as one of the reasons. Now, because of that, and because a fifth of people in the US experience bloating. It's worth investigating this from this 2023 study. General gastrointestinal problems such as bloating are the main symptoms of dysbiosis, which again is a imbalance of the gut microbiome and probiotics with bacteria from the same species that is included in one of those 24 strains in seed had some good results from this randomized control trial. Abdominal bloating severity was a third better in the probiotics group compared to the control group at four weeks. And I will add that Lindy and I have been taking seeds since 2021. And Lindy, especially with a history of digestive issues, just loves taking seed. And so of course, if you would like to try seeds, DS01 Daily Symbiotic, you can click the link below and use the code Mike for 25% off your first month's supply. All right. And now I really want to move on to brain health because that's so important in terms of aging. And I want to let Dr. Gregor make a good point, but I also want to mention that he sent me an advanced copy of his book, I'm sorry that you can't have it, uh, but it'll be out someday. So uh, thanks, Dr. Gregor. <laughs> Perhaps this is why a study in Singapore found that those who consumed more than two servings of mushrooms a week had less than half the odds of suffering from mild cognitive impairment compared to less than once a week. I would add from this study that mushrooms are also associated with lower depression. Of course, we're talking about brain-related issues, and there's really important brain-related information here with ergothionine. First of which, from this paper, quote, ergothionine is highly distributed in the brain due to the presence of a specific transporter that enables it to cross the blood-brain barrier. We'll get to that transporter in a bit and how important it is, but I would just say that some other antioxidants like curcumin from turmeric can't cross the blood-brain barrier, and then we we also have polyphenols, which can cross the blood-brain barrier, but they're pretty quickly expelled through the system. And Alzheimer's is, of course, a major brain-related aging disease, and you know I don't like rodent studies ethically and in terms of how well they translate into humans, especially with Alzheimer's research, not that great, but I just have to mention 
The conclusion of this mouse study, looking at those hallmark beta amyloid plaques, etc., conclude that ergothionine has the potential to prevent Alzheimer's disease. And just to echo that, here is another study showing that ergothionine enhanced the clearance of beta amyloid plaque. And another important aspect of brain diseases like Alzheimer's is heavy metals and metals getting up in there well from this paper. Ergothionine exhibits strong metal chelating activities, you know, binding to metals such as copper and iron, which play a role in Alzheimer's. And lastly, this study, sadly a mouse one, sorry, showed that ergothionine buffers artery wall damage from mercury. And now let's just dive deeper into the mechanisms for how ergothionine works. First of all, it's just how it can get where it gets, which brings me to that specific receptor. But first from this paper, quote, ergothionine is found to be highly accumulated in tissues that are susceptible to oxidative damage. And of course it has a power powerful antioxidant activity level. Now, ergothionine can get into any cell with its specific receptor, which was originally called OCTN1, kind of like octagon one. But then scientists were like, no, we should actually be calling it SLC, like Salt Lake City, 22A4, like just to make things more complicated. Thanks, scientists. But this is where there is a pretty strong case for it being some type of essential vitamin because these are very specific receptors that are for ergothionine, and they are in those places where we really get oxidative stress. And the activity of these receptors increases before we eat in anticipation of getting dietary ergothionine clearly. And from this paper, these receptors are in a wide variety of tissues, such as liver, bone marrow, intestines, kidney, trachea, and the brain. Here are illustrations of a few types of cells that have it. And you can see those little dots of the ergothionine doing their job. And I would add that it is just in human connective tissue. It's in skin, it's also in semen. But this is where I think the main ergothionine benefit is, and that has to do with how long it lasts. You know, Dr. Gregor has been like, oh, hibiscus tea, super high in antioxidants. So like drink hibiscus tea all day long and then oh wait it kind of like melts your teeth so you got to use the straw and all that stuff well it turns out that ergothionine just lasts way longer from this page apparently it is 10 times as potent as polyphenols and lasts 300 times as long well that's not a peer-reviewed source However, from this actual peer-reviewed paper, yes, it does appear that the half-life or time until half of it is gone is 30 days. So yeah, it's mostly lasting over 700 hours. Well, as this study mentions, to contrast, many polyphenols are rapidly metabolized or excreted from the body. That being said, there are a ton of studies showing the wide benefits of polyphenols. They can still get the job done, but you know, this is in there for longer. And then we have to talk about its potency it has been put head to head with some antioxidants in studies. One you may have heard of is CoQ10, which we make internally and recharge internally and sunlight can actually do that, which is cool. I've talked about in the past, it's also in some foods. Well, this study says that ergothionine is just more powerful than CoQ10. And then from this paper, once again, glutathione is not as powerful as ergothionine either. And you might know that glutathione is like one of our body's main, if not the main internally produced antioxidant that we have. So uh, yeah, that's a big deal. And as several studies have described, ergothionine helps with this whole cascade of anti-aging effects. But there's one little interaction here that I wanted to talk about, which I think is interesting and people will understand. And that has to do with the mitochondria or the powerhouse of the cell and how that is connected to how our cells just turn into pancakes as we age. They actually do get thinner and fatter. And what we're talking about here is cell senescence where you know cells continue to multiply yet they're just kind of crappy and need to die. Now, this is an aging issue and can be caused by various things, including mitochondria dysfunction. And mitochondria dysfunction can be driven by, of course, oxidative stress, which drives every major disease as well as aging. Well, guess what? Back to this paper. Yeah, that ergothionine specific transporter is expressed on the membrane of mitochondria itself, which creates a unique antioxidant opportunity, though even just having antioxidants 
in and around would probably help. And finally, back to those lovely Petri dishes, as the study also mentions, a 2016 study revealed that ergothionine protects against high glucose-induced endothelial or artery wall cell senescence by upregulating sirtuin-6 expression. And yes, sirtuins play a large role in aging from DNA protection to that cell senescence. And it goes down as we age, so it's huge that ergothionine could potentially be boosting that. Again, we need more human stuff. Studies. In the end, despite needing more human trials, which it looks like we're gonna get a lot of in the next few years, it does seem that our body really is meant to consume ergothionine. It likes to uptake it into a ton of different cells and it likes to keep it there, probably because evolutionarily having it there would prevent oxidative stress, prevent damage, keep our bodies functioning better. You know, it's just a powerful antioxidant. It lasts within the body much longer than polyphenols and other antioxidants. It gets to more places and other antioxidants. It can chelate metals. I mean, the reasons just go on and on and on to why you should be eating more mushrooms. Is supplementation gonna be doing everything that the mushrooms are? I don't know, but it's got me seriously considering growing some mushrooms, you know, maybe some porcini and some lion's mane together would be pretty awesome based off my lion's mane video, which you could also watch. And yeah, we've just hit the tip of the iceberg in research here, kind of like the tip of a mushroom popping out representing the large fungal body below. So yeah, definitely expect a follow-up video in the coming years on this one. And of course, if you would like to try Seeds DS01 Daily Symbiotic, you can click the link below and use the code Mike at checkout for 25% off your first month's supply. And as usual, let me know down below if there are any cool ergothionine points that I missed or things that you want clarified and like and subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.